Uh, we're here today talking about immersive democracy with Sylvan Baker and Alex Bell, who are going to be talking to us from the UK. So I think without much further ado, I'm going to be bringing up Sylvan and Alex in a second, um, who have been talking about their immersive democracy uh, strategy, uh, which allows you to unite all stakeholder, stakeholders in education behind a strategy that will prepare students for adulthood. So let me stop this for a moment and let me bring up Alex and Sylvan. Alex and Sylvan. Hello. There you are. Hi. Hi. So, um, so where are you right now? We're in a shed at the bottom of the garden in uh, South East London. So uh, we're, above our head is the Greenwich Meridian line, literally. So um, yeah, that, that's where we are. Yeah. So uh, the children are asleep. We're here, um, it's half past 10 at night in the UK, and um, we're very excited to be with you. And Mitch, can I thank you very much for, for having us here. We're a big fan of what you do, and um, it's great to be with oh, you. Oh, thank you. So just at, as a way of introduction, you know, um, what are your backgrounds? You know, Alex, you, you came through teaching, correct? Yeah, um, jack of all trades, headmaster of none is the way I describe myself. So I'm an ex -head, head teacher in the UK, um, did pretty well with that, and now uh, I've got aspirations to do lots of things globally. So, um, uh, yeah, between us, we do lots of work uh, around the world um, in education mm -hmm. and uh, applied arts as well. And Sylvan, I know you were just in Colombia. So, what were you doing in Colombia? I was fortunate enough, Mitch, to be invited by uh, the Research Council of the UK and the governor of uh, Bogota to see if we could scope uh, funding calls for what's known as the Newton Fund. The Newton Fund is sponsored mm -hmm. by the Department of Business, Innovation and Skills and is in partnership with the research councils looking at ways in which British academics, my own research practices in applied and community theatre, how British academics could bring their skills, their practice, their experience to help advance the developing uh, post-conflict agenda, which is happening over there. Hmm. Fascinating, fascinating. So it's probably, you know, why don't I bring myself down and I'll bring your slides up and we'll get started. That'd be lovely. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so we'll start talking and the slides will come up, I'm sure. There's a slight delay. We've done this before um, in various um, other forums, a slight delay, so uh, bear with us on that one. So immersive democracy. So Really, we wanted to go away from uh, this session with about an hour with you uh, with a very clear idea about what it is. In some it's quite hard to describe what it is. We want to give you a, a, a fairly loose blueprint of how you could use it. And also, because it's shindig and it's interactive, we want to give you a chance to have your say. And uh, it's not a half-baked idea, it's a half-formed idea. And so we really want to get you involved with what you think about it and how you can take it forward in, in your own setting. We've both been thinking about it for a while now, but we really relish the fact that we can share our thoughts to date with other people and get some feedback on those thoughts. The next slide, please, Mitch. Thank you. So we couldn't do this kind of thing without including our own children. There. We've got five children. Um, you know, I've got two children. Um, Sylv's got three. That's my son there and, uh, and Sylv's daughter. They are they're, they're great friends, and that's how we got to know each other as well uh, through the school. Uh, what Alex isn't saying is that the school that we got to know each other through was the school that he was head teacher of and very successfully a head teacher of. Yeah, did you see how I waited for him to say that about me? Though? Just, didn't, <laughs> I couldn't say it myself. I wasn't sure that's where the break was going to come. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's so we've had conversations about life, the universe, and everything, and that's really when we started to get serious about what education is for. So Mitch is going to put on the, the next slide for that one. Yeah, the purpose of education. If you think. Um, you're all in parts of the world now on Shindig and, and we're in London, that education looks very different in different parts of the world and, and each has its own purpose. I think sometimes there are common purposes and sometimes which are purposes which are sort of context led. So we started thinking about that big, big idea about the actual reason we send our kids to school. What is it that the purpose of education? So that's where immersive democracy sort of started almost in the shed you know a, a little while ago what is that purpose what is that educative purpose now in the 21st century i prefer what it was when people started first to send their children to school so a couple of things we're going to take you through now is one the sort of historical context of what led up to this idea really and also looking more globally about what what it could be and what the demands are um, in the 21st century so mitch next slide please 
Okay, that picture there, um, you may have seen it before. Um, it's of 19th century views of what education could be like in the future. So uh, we think about how uh, 19th century uh, schools operated. They weren't at all democratic. They were for a very clear purpose. That, that purpose was quite mechanistic, quite hierarchical as well. And we've moved on from that. That kind of education isn't needed anymore. There's, a, there's, there's uh, time for something else to, to shift. So next slide, please. Um, Mitch. Thank you. Another idea I think whose time has passed is where education was about homogenizing the learner, about uh, rising to a standard, about narrowing the norms so that uh, a good education would turn out a standardized uh, intellect, a standardized uh, way of uh, thresholding what people did to send them out to do various tasks ar around the world with their, uh, some jobs. I think outside the, the sector of education, everywhere from, from, from commerce to, to, to sports, has seen the benefit in the opposite of this state of being, in a much more diverse, in every way, much more diverse way of being. Yes, the next slide please, Mitch, thank you. Just give you a chance to get the punchline. There you go. Um, I think outside of education, there's lots of movement where people are Bucking the, the, bucking the trends we've had in the past, they are um, disrupting the norms that we've had. So for example, um, if you go for blue chip companies now, quite often we'll take uh, students, young people directly um, uh, in, into, the, into their care, if you like, bypassing the university system. Universities could uh, uh, will look very, very different in, in 10, 15 years time. Also at the interview stage as well, um, it, it could be it could be the case we see it happening quite a lot where it, these interviews are done blind, where you don't know what Ivy League or what um, Russell Group University people have been to. You just take them on their merit in that moment. A much more democratic way of actually um, engaging with somebody. And why is this happening? Because knowledge, form C knowledge, no longer has the currency it had when the educational structures that we work with were created. Now, with the onset of new technologies, I talk to, I'll, I'll talk about later, it's ideas and skills and other competencies that are required. And industry has brought into, into that, understands that, so is moving past this idea of gongs and certificates and qualifications. Okay, next slide please, Mitch, thank you. Okay, so we're here and we've got these signposts pointing to the future. So what is it that we are proposing and we are seeing happening uh, in, in various places. So we're seeing it happening outside of education. We're seeing it happen in different parts of the world where education is being seen to have a different purpose and therefore needs to look and feel different. And we're proposing that immersive democracy is one way of um, pushing that, that, that forward. I mean, we're being slightly um, provocative in our metaphor yep. here because we chose a signpost rather than a crossroads, because it's our belief that education isn't at a crossroads, and actually, it should be. If you go to the next slide, Mitch, please. I mean, as I alluded to earlier, um, technology is creating a, a societal position where individuals are taking on an agency, making their own environments far more democratic than they've ever been. The onset and the proliferation of the internet means that certain modes of thinking are now completely gone. If one wanted to publish a novel or release an album in the past, you had to engage with and be subject to a very established hierarchy. Now with the internet, everyone can publish books, anyone can record albums and release them if they have that skill, and if you even just want to share your opinions, just be a journalist, the technology is allowing you to have the agency to do so, to do that and not be, not be locked out of having a voice because you weren't a member of the right structures. We believe that that democratic feeling, that wave that's already out there in society needs to flow into education. It needs to fit into there because it would then create what we hope is a virtuous circle within education. Education wouldn't be about stamping its mark on you and placing you in your place. It would open the platform to dialogue, conversation between students as learners, with teachers and parents and governors. If we go to the next slide, please, Mitch. And that, in essence, is the point. The point of education is to share and explore, 
not to take empty vessels and to draw on the work of Paulo Freire, make them take those passive objects and fill them with the knowledge that comes down from the master. That's not all mysteries. That's not what we want with uh, immersive democracy. The point is to change the paradigm. Next slide, please, Nick. Next slide. There's a slight delay unless we can still see what the point is. Yeah, we'll get to see what the point is. I'm going to start talking and maybe this slide will change as I talk. We hope. Who knows? So the, the next slide, when we can see it, will say that um, the, the two things, democracy and education have been running parallel for a long time. I think this, 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 this um, point where they actually converge that we're very interested in. And Mitch, if you can go to the next slide after that. The slides, we're not seeing them move. Mitch, can you, can you hear us if you can? It would be great if the, if the slides move forward. One of those things about being at the vanguard of modern technology is sometimes <laughs> it, it, it behaves in uh, uh, unconsidered ways or, uh, or ways that, that are unexpected. And I think that's what's happening now. But we're going to carry on and, and try to explain what we think anyway. OK, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just throw out some questions, really. So you want to know what immersive democracy is. OK, and the slide may come up, may not come up. There's some questions we want you to consider and, and talk to the person um, that you can click on after that. So for us, it's about going into schools, working with schools and working across all stakeholders, making sure that as many people as possible have a voice and are considered. And when we work with those schools, it's asking, what is the purpose? What is the point of schools? Good question. What, why are we sending up to school? Why are children turning up to school? And then we'll ask people, what do you want to put into school to meet your purpose? Then what do you want to get out of school to meet your purpose? And then what helps that purpose and what gets the way of that purpose? So Mitch, we're gonna now just throw this open to the floor and ask people to, to think through those things there. First of all, what's the purpose? What's the point of school? If you possess um, 20th century technology, like a pen or a pencil, it might be worth <laughs> just noting it down. What's the purpose? What to, what's, the, what's the purpose and the point of school? And for each of those particular participants in, in a school um, community, what is their respective purpose? What gets in the way of that purpose? And what advances that purpose? And if you can see the other avatars around you in this room, just find someone and have a conversation for four or five minutes about that. What, in your shared opinion, is the purpose of school? If you haven't done that before, it worked. Honestly, the first time I did it, it felt really weird just tapping something on the shoulder and having a conversation with it. But just, just do it. That's what Shindig's for. It's very interactive. We need you to have a conversation with each other. That'd be great. Thank you. <coughs> I'm just going to uh, lean forward and get out of shot so that I can try and message Mitch to see if there's some technical situation that we need to know about. So apologies there if all you could hear was me tapping on keys, but I'm also considering if you can uh, see the other people who are in the room, you can roll your mouse pointer over your own avatar and you can see that there is an IM uh, instant messaging chat window, which you can also draw upon if you can't tap um, other uh, delegates to this ed chat on the shoulder. Um, if, if nothing else, we know that our immersive democracy is very agile and can adapt to whatever the situations are, are, are presented to it. And I think that's what's happening now. Hello, Patrick. Hello. 
again, you might just be hearing key, keyboard presses, but what we're trying to do is, is look around at the avatars we can see in the room and tap them on the shoulder. Uh, as far as I can see, there might be some kind of technical problem, which is stopping some of this process happening. We're going to try and see if we can get hold of Mitch, the administrator, to see if we can put this right. Apologies. Have we lost Mitch? Yeah. yeah Patrick, Mitch. can you hear us? Yeah. Zach, can you hear us? If, if anyone who's still in the room can hear us, can you just nod your head? Because it may be that we've lost our administrator. Welcome. Ah. Okay, so um, yeah, I just tried texting you. Also, uh, I lost my electricity. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Well, the first time that's ever happened in a in a shindig, and I see that there's two questions. Um, yeah, you from from you and uh, Patrick said that we need to have the slides moved. I am, you know, that's <laughs> the way it goes. You know, uh, there's uh, actually a couple fire trucks um, right outside the the window. Um, but um, I'm going to uh, bring myself down. I'll bring the slides up, and I'm not sure what slide number you're on, but you'll um, you'll just say next in, until we find it. Right? And if I um, disappear again, it, you know, I who knows? I guess um, Saint Patrick is angry at me for some reason. Um, Shade of green, Mitch. Yeah. I think we we were improvising around that anyway. But it would be really great if we could show the people who are with us on the edge chat those questions. That would be okay. Nice. Okay. Thanks, Mitch. Okay, so folks, we're just going to bring up the the questions now, and that's that's, that's the one. Great, the one. lovely. That's Thank awesome. you, Mitch. So, Brilliant. just if you want to find um, somebody uh, else in the room, tap them on the shoulder and have a conversation with them. Get into those, those questions there. The purpose of uh, the purpose and point of school, in terms of your setting, what you put into the school to meet your purpose, what you get out of the school to meet your purpose, what helps you meet the purpose, and what gets in the way of that purpose. If, so, there's, the, if there's no one else in the um, room to talk to because conversations have already started, then send Mitch a, a, an answer to one of those questions, and yeah. then we can discuss it, or we'll bring you up on stage and you can discuss it with us. Fantastic. So we're going to take ourselves down, Mitch, and um, let people get on with that. Yeah, I'm thinking that because of the difficulty that uh, I had with the electricity, um, the, the the person who's here right now is Patrick. And so, um, oops, maybe, yeah. And so... Very clearly, he, he, he tuned into what the school was going to be like for him, how he could be a co-creator of his own education. Mm-hmm. And Sylvan, have you tried this with with any with your children also? Yeah, the, the mode by which I work has to be co-created, right? Um, mm -hmm. Unless there is a, a a genuine, shared and authentic engagement by participants in the kind of work that I do, it mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't fulfil the the aspiration. I mean, I've just noticed that the, some of the folk that are in the room have been having conversations, and and, and Patrick and Zach are. are uh, moving uh, moving around the space. I just wonder mm -hmm. if we can't hear you folks, whether you're able to just um, instant message some of the, uh, the results of your conversation with each other to, mm -hmm. to so that we can we can share it or get to know what you've been what you've been talking about. Zach, I can right. think of you, I can see you. Can you just like mm -hmm. tap in some of the um, comments you may have had or you may have had in your conversations with Patrick that came out that we might want to share and discuss further. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just you know, continuing the questions with with you all, um, just with and with the you know with with your your own children or other children that you tried that with, I'm curious to know what um, what they responded when you asked them what's what gets in the way of that purpose. What were some of the things that they came up with? I think children play the game very well. I think sometimes they don't give an honest answer. I think there's a lot of things which are institutionalized and systems that actually get in the way the pure purpose. So if you think about children mm -hmm. when they are playing, 
when they are learning freely, that's often not always to do with school. I think you've got to be very clear the difference between learning or education and school. At, at their worst, schools can get in the way of learning by all the systems and the constructs of learning. And what mm -hmm. we want in a democracy to do is to remind everyone in the school community what we're here for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Ken Robinson has said on several occasions that sometimes um, the school system can beat the creativity out of individuals. I think mm -hmm. with, with my own family, right. one, one of the things that's really interesting is setting up an environment where any questions they have, and they have lots, you know, and they should, are, are taken seriously. I mean, I think that transaction that most parents will be familiar, familiar with as they uh, start to speak with their children, that why transaction, is, is a mm -hmm. perfect example of it. So mm -hmm. you, why is the sky blue? And you might go, well, it's because of the way the light breaks through the, the, the water droplets and breaks the spectrum up to make the sky blue. And then they go, why? And they go, why? Um, and they are constantly drilling down through the question to get to a deeper truth. Now, mm -hmm. in the family, or in our family, that's great. Um, I can see situations where certain teachers who become used to a certain paradigm of education would find that insubordinate or disruptive or challenging. And therefore, mm -hmm. the approach that a child has coming from a framework which is play-based, which is ludic, which is about the exploration and the discovery through as much through failure as through success is sometimes seen as counter um, intuitive. So, so you just use an, you just use an interesting term that my guess is very few people use. Um, you use the term ludic. The, Can you um, uh, right? Can you explain that term? Uh, ludic is the space that's created through play. What is learned through play? If you mm -hmm. extend out of human uh, existence into um, the animal uh, kingdom, most creatures acquire their skills through play. If you watch mm -hmm. Top of the Food Chain Predators, their offspring play at hunting before they hunt. That is the ludic space, the space which is um, at its best, most open th th uh, through play. Mm -hmm. And so, and even you know, it, well, not that it's that far back, but you go back to Piaget, who basically said the the human mind is wired to learn through play. But I guess we're coming out of. How does this relate to immersive democracy then? Should we go out to the slides? If, if the lecture is sure. okay, and okay. Tonight, where you are in the world in New York, then um, let's have a go back with the slides. Okay. All right. I'll I'll bring the slides up. How it how it yeah. relates. Okay. Great. So that's a really good point to pick up on things again, really. So um, we are very clear that this, this quote's from John Dewey, lovely quote here, that education isn't preparation for life, it's life itself. So we're very clear that immersive democracy isn't playing at it. It's truly authentic and it's something which the whole school can buy in and use in real time. It's not uh, something you do separately. It's, it's a part and parcel of the way the school operates. So next slide, please, Mitch. Very clear that it's not about handing the keys over to the children and you know just let them get on with it and, and negating responsibilities. It's a very responsible approach where children learn respect through being respected. Uh, next slide, please, Mitch. And really important as well to say that it's not about young people pretending to be an adult. It's not about young people guessing what an adult would do and trying to act like that. It's being themselves and authentic. And like um, Sil was talking about with his own family, that being respected and part of the, of, the, of the process. So it's very important that we get clear what immersive democracy isn't, because I think in the past, with let's say the 60s, there were certain bits of uh, democratic education which didn't work. It's fascinating to see in the Global Teacher Prize uh, recently, one of the nominees was um, Sands School, the head teacher of the Sands School in um, the West Country of England. That, ha that runs a democratic a democratic school. So the, the, the time is right for us to reframe what we mean by uh, uh, immersive democracy and, and, and democratic education. And why, and why is the democracy immersive? We drew on some of the learnings and practice that were coming out of a, a newer 
form of theatre, a form of theatre which was called immersive theatre. And in immersive theatre, the, the boundaries of control that an audience member has, instead of just sitting in the theatre and passively watching a performance, those boundaries were being pushed back so that they were given more agency over the direction of the narrative. We liked that metaphor, the idea that you're no longer just a spectator, but you're actually active in the development of your own storytelling when you go to the theatre. And we thought that was a great metaphor for how a school could function. Yeah, if it works well in theatre, why would we want to have it in education as well? So something which is truly democratic, that works and is immersive. So it's, it's, it's got its own allure to it. So uh, Mitch, um, if you could change the slides, please. There's no power cut. Great. So we know that in, in um, the wider world, the population are already aware that they have power. The proliferation of these, these popular uprisings that have been happening in the early noughties shows that people realise that they can step out of the conventional ascribed role, which in a, in, in a democracy is to uh, select their representatives on a, a, a four or five yearly cycle. Popular dissent, peaceful dissent, is uh, a manifestation, in my mind, of uh, an immersive democracy. People are working together and they are all aligned towards a particular aim. So we want the structure of schools to work more in, t in tune with that idea of a network rather than a hierarchy. A network that works, and we've seen it work elsewhere. elsewhere. Next slide. Further support from a wider context, we know that there are more people living in urban settings than in rural settings. Those urban settings, those sprawls, are changing in the way in which they are composed. Now, you can see a picture there, that's of a, a favela, an improvised community, uh, a slum, a shanty town, a barrio, depending where you are in the world, where the uh, existing rules of town planning and architecture don't apply, and where the communities may not have full citizenship, full agency into the wider um, urban setting in which they find themselves, but within the favela community, or in the shanty town community, or in the barrio community, they've evolved a structure which is filling the gaps that are left by the absence of the state. Uh, the next slide please. Yes, there's lots we can learn from, from those kind of uh, um, parts of society. This one's really good. This one's it's from your sort of practice, isn't it? I mean, when I look at my own creative practice, there is a, a, a subgenre which is intergenerational practice. The benefit of bringing those people from, very, from various ages together to work. And why do I say that this is immersively democratic? Well, the only thing which is not important is the age of the participants. And very quickly, when you bring children and young people together with adults, the ideas are the currency. The fact that somebody is six and someone is 60 very quickly becomes irrelevant. And the platform is flattened so that there is just a space for conversation. This is inherently, to my mind, to our mind, immersively democratic. And if it can work in a performative way, if it can work so that people can share their ideas because that they know that they are being authentically listened to in a theatrical setting, why can't it work in an education, educative setting? Great, so next slide, please. So we want to stop, stop talking now. We want to hand things over to you. So we want to start the conversation here. So after you've um, seen this, whether you're seeing this live now or it's going to be archived by, by Shindig and by Mitch, uh, we want to start this conversation with you about what you think immersive democracy is and what, what it can do for you. So um, next slide please Mitch. You've heard us speak, you've got a sense of what it's like with all the, um, the glitches that, that happen with, with Shindy, but I've, hopefully we've made it clear what we think it can do and needs to do with the, 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 the current paradigms in, in learning and education. And next slide please Mitch. And really just, we've got about 15 minutes left. One of the things we want to do is share with you some of the theoretical background to where our thinkings come from. And uh, it's not just something we've plucked out of the air in the shed in South London. We are practitioners, we're doing this, um, we're thinking through these ideas with the people we work with. Um, so this first one, it's um, Guy Claxton's What's the Point of School? And I think it, it works very well in just taking things back to the bare bones of why we educate, what the point is of that construct of schools. I spoke before about education doesn't always mean schools, schools don't always mean education when they get it wrong. 
Uh, Claxton really nails that one. I think it's a very, very useful book to start off with those kind of questions. Um, Hello, Mitch. Yeah, I, yes, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd step in here because um, there was a really interest, interesting question from Patrick, and unfortunately his mic isn't working, uh, okay. so he can't get up here and, and ask it, but um, I'm going to try to paraphrasing it, and if I get it wrong, maybe Patrick can, can text me. But, you know, he's been, you know, looking at a, the problem, one of the problems he's been looking at in schools is, is the problem of, uh, of racism and dealing, and that dealing with dire directly with that problem helps with the democratic classroom. So, so the first part of the question seems to me is um, this could be a technique that's used to deal with a wide variety of issues, such such as racism or, um, you know, or bullying or. Um, or, or other types of social skills. And how how might you apply it? You know, how might you apply immersive de democracy to those types of issues? That, that's a thank thank you, Patrick, for persevering with that. Sorry we couldn't hear you, but uh, thanks for messing that in. I think it fits really really well because I think immersive democracy fits the idea of you being yourself. It's it's um, humanity that's going to take us forward. And it's uh, you know. Um, one of the things that's very important with the next opportunity for for um, education is we need to stop trying to homogenize what we are and we need to celebrate the diversity because i think you know we've been trying to outrun artificial intelligence we've been trying to outrun uh, sort of uh, mechanical industrialized things we can't do that now we have to become more human and mm -hmm. enjoy the idiosyncrasies of, of difference in order to distinguish ourselves from from <laughs> artificial intelligence is snapping at our heels so the fact that we are different is hybrid vigor and i think immersive democracy would fit very well with that wouldn't it absolutely i mean i think to add on to that one of the um structures of how an oppressive structure like uh, um racism works is it limits voice it um uh expands notions uh, that are stereotypical mm -hmm. and it doesn't like a platform of reflection and in an immersively democratic space there is scope to explore how and why attitudes values and beliefs may come into being and part of that space is that the reflection may not be as judgmental as it as being well this is wrong and this is and, th and this shouldn't happen there is mm -hmm. more scope to explain the structures the systems and the how these oppressive processes come into being so that the reflection and therefore the transformation happens inside the individual. Mm -hmm. And because it's more of a dialogue, the listening is a great leveler. It, 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 once you understand and appreciate the difference, then I think racism is, it finds it harder to find its place really. So I think that the, the, the idea of immersive democracy and the construct of uh, mm -hmm. listening really helps with that. I mean, I find from my own experience of being of a different ethnicity in, in, in lots of settings where I work, the simple, my simple presence and the simple modelling of a way of being starts to undermine commonly held beliefs about what I could be, wherever I am in the world. And it's the, the reflective challenge of those commonly held beliefs, which when they are then linked with attitudes and values, could be seen as being racist or sexist or homophobic mm -hmm. or uh, uh or any of the other or any of the others mm -hmm. that are right. so, so just kind of related it it seemed to me seems to me as you're talking about you know how to apply immersive democracy to schools and to, and to these other issues as well it's a structured process for yes. bringing in a collaborative environment and if you think about um you know, it's a different kind of uh, structure. It's a structure that, that's loose enough mm -hmm. to include uh, di di different ideas, that, that, that celebrates diversity, that celebrates listening. And I think mm -hmm. there are many other hierarchies and systems and constructs that, that exclude individuality and, and thought and those kinds of things. There. Mm -hmm. We need the contributions to, to make mm -hmm. it work. Fundamentally, it's a creative practice. So, 
Great. So you you related a time where you applied this to one particular student, but the sec to me the second part of Patrick's question is, how do you apply this to a classroom or to a school? Because in a classroom you may have thirty five students, so the teacher can't take you know fifteen minutes with each student and say to each student what is the to you what is the purpose the point of the school what do you put into the school to your purpose what do you get out of school to meet your purpose what helps you meet that purpose and what gets in the way you can't you, you can't take the time out and deal and and ask those questions individually i don't think um how do you what, you know what mitch i think not enough schools stop the busyness of what they're doing to actually focus mm -hmm. on why they're doing mm -hmm. actually, the example I gave my own child, that they're setting up a school from scratch. It's a perfect opportunity to say, right, you know, what's gone wrong in the past with schools? What's the opportunity for us in the future? Let's try and get it right this time. Mm -hmm. and I think you know, every school can give itself permission to start again. I mean, schools that have, one of the schools that, you know, I've worked with that sort of turned itself around, repositioned itself about what it was for. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, and that's one of the successes was because we, we focused on the purpose. The purpose was learning, and learning was for the purpose. I think. I think also what's sometimes a misconstruction of, of the idea of, of offering um, engagement to students is to walk up to a group of students and say, "What do you want to do?" Now, if you've been uh, educated within a structure where you don't have that agency and mm -hmm. you've been invited to ask what the purpose of school is, someone coming up to you and going, "What do you want to do?" tends to render you mute. Mm -hmm. so Actually, remind a group, and I mean, I think what's interesting and, and a way of answering your question, Mitch, is to say it doesn't have to be individual. It could be in a group. If you sit with your class, if you're an educator of that kind, then say to your class, "Tell me what you think is the purpose of school," and then you are genuinely and authentically, mm -hmm. and in my practice, creatively finding out what the answers are to those questions. Two things will happen. One will be an intellectual process of reflection in those students. Uh -huh. The other will be an emotional process. Yes. And the mm -hmm. thing about a creative process is it can do those outcomes simultaneously. So it might not be a one to one conversation. Mm -hmm. It might be a one to one conversation with a member of staff or with a governor or with a parent. But with a class, it can be mm -hmm. a dialogue. We can have a group dialogue. That's an important point that um, Sills made as well. Is that I think to really work, you need to capture each of those um, stakeholders. Right. At the same time, you're working with a, with a group of students. You also need to be working with the administrators or the governors mm -hmm. to say this is what we're trying to do, so that there's a common understanding. So even if not everybody gets it, there are key people in key positions. I'm talking about the, the students being, you know, mm -hmm. the most important ones coming to the fore there that are part of that. One of the things that we haven't said yet is that you know, many schools talk about vision and values. They take the time out. So the kids get sent home and, the, and the, all the staff and the faculty have a conversation about what we're about. The children get left behind with that sometimes. You know? Right. Schools actually involve the children in that, pro in that process. What are we about? What are we doing? What should we do next? If I had like currency for every time I've worked in a, a child-centered or a child-focused project that has no children in, I probably wouldn't need to do anything else. And that's one of the problems. <laughs> It's about right. differently at the paradigm. And there is already a proof of concept on this paradigm. Yep. It's being yep. used almost everywhere except a school environment. And we're mm -hmm. saying by engaging collectively in a creative practice, mm -hmm. discoveries are made on the journey of that practice, as well as outcomes, outputs coming from that practice. Mm -hmm. What happens if you've decided as a school to work out what your purpose is? And if you discover that purpose through um, a creative exploration, what the participants engaging in that practice learn about themselves, learn about each mm -hmm. other, and learn about the fact that they are being taken seriously. All of that is immersive democracy. So if a school decided or that this sounds really interesting, but I don't think that we can do this on our own or if a teacher decided you know something i'd like to do this with my kids in my class and, and you know how would he or she get some help doing it it's i was the, hoping you would ask this <laughs> that's a perfect oh. opportunity it's the power of the network 
it's about you know, Yong Zhao on Tuesday spoke about how Lady Gaga, even Lady Gaga is useful. Okay, the idea is that that because of technology like this, you know, and great people like yourself, Mitch, that that you you don't have to be alone anymore. You know, a, a voice in the wilderness. You can find other people like us, like the, the other participants on Chindu tonight, to say, let's think through this idea. I may not have immediate neighbours around me that get it, but there are people globally that really get it. And there are examples of schools that are doing this really well as well. I want to name check um, Graham Brown Martin. He's got a really good book. We've got a slide um, up there. Oh, I, I can bring the slides. I, I, I'll, I'll bring myself down and bring those slides up. Oh, no? Okay. Check if anybody wants to do the things after. His, um, his book, and there's also a lot of online content as well, is called um, Learning Reimagined. And mm -hmm. he went to um, 17 countries over 18 um, months and looked at really good examples of um, technology bringing people together and um, uh, getting it right. So I think mm -hmm. if you're interested in, in immersive democracy, there are many, many ways you know, via us, via the other communities to actually uh, link up those little glimmers of hope for the future. So if we're going mm -hmm. 20th century technology on that, Graham, Brown, Martin, and the book is? Learning Reimagined. There's a slide somewhere, but don't worry about that. And what's wonderful um, about it is you can download that book. Thing, but... Yeah, no, oh. um, it's also Yong Zhao. Yong Zhao, we want to name check him. You yeah. have on Tuesday, World Class Learners. That's another idea of connecting up like-minded people through technology and, and mm -hmm. reinforcing the humanity of what we're about. The immersive democracy aspect of what we're doing. What's fascinating mm -hmm. about lots of these thought leaders that we've drawn on when we've been, been conceiving what we think is immersive democracy is this notion mm -hmm. of authenticity, is this notion of collective engagement. And students quite often are left out of that transaction. Yep. Um, last book I want to recommend to you a really good one. This is the one you can download Sorry, yeah, for free and then pay what you think it's worth afterwards and it's worth a lot of money because it's, it's a very, very, um, I would say, a game changing book, really. It's called Reinventing Organizations. It's by Patrick Lalou, and it's really informed a lot of what we're thinking about, where the old hierarchies are redundant, I would say, and networks are the, the uh, what we need for the next stage in humanity. And we'll have these, you have these on your slides, and we'll make the slides downloadable from the, you know, the archive when we, when we post it up. So, you so can, people don't have to memorize these. You'll you'll see them on the on the slides. Yeah. So you've got this network of like-minded people. It's us. Mm -hmm. We want you to contact us if we you think it would be useful for for us to come and work with you and your schools. But and and your handles are, are also on the slides. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, okay. exactly. We're, yep. we're aware that like most things, there's no such thing as a as a new idea. We know that some of the things that we are believing to be the tenets of immersive democracy are already happening. And what we really love is for you to tell tell us where they're happening if you're aware of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, just kind of relating it back to Patrick's question where, you know, he brought up, well, how do you use this technique with serious problems? I, I also do want to say another person, Jennifer Abrams, who happens to be coming up on EdChat Interactive on the 28th, specifically going to be talking about how to have difficult conversations and what you can learn from them. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's very important to say that the, we, we're talking about the, the ideal now, and I think there will have to be a rough period where you've got students you talk to in an immersive democratic way, and they don't get it yet. They haven't flexed that muscle yet. You'll, you'll talk to faculty and the governors that don't get it, but you have to stick with it. And then eventually the whole thing does come together. This is about agency, and agency doesn't come overnight for some. Right. And so, and what's next for you two? Are you do you have schools that you're working with? Uh, we're, we're, very, so? we're working. Um, we've got a lot of support from the Royal Society of Arts, which is a fantastic organisation that, that, that's backed us with, with this idea. They've got a, a really good publication just this week on um, innovations from the ground up. So they they are very much behind that. So we're working alongside them, and um, they're doing some good work. Wow. Well. Well, yeah, it, you know, it sounds interesting. Do you do you have some? Because uh, we're we're coming up to the end of the hour. Do you have some closing uh, statements that you'd like to make, or or questions that you'd like to ask people to consider? The the takeaways we wanted to have that, that you had a sense of what immersive democracy is about, and and hopefully we've given you that sense of it's something which is uh, forward focused with the, 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 the new state of humanity. Uh, we also want to say that you know the old way of teaching, which is still 
very resilient in, in lots of schools about trying to to mechanize thought and systemize thought is, is redundant you know artificial intelligence we've not really touched on this evening that is a very strong emerging emerging presence and we can't compete with that we have to be different we have to be more human and i think immersive democracy is a really good way of meeting that need of us being more human in the way we interact with each other the way we engage and why not start that in schools because mm -hmm. uh, lots of other uh, organizations are getting that right already. Schools, I think, are lagging behind and it's time for them to actually you know, take the lead on that. So, so innovate from the ground up. I think what I would say just to add briefly is that a lot of the, the, the tenets of citizenship and uh, uh, agency are being mechanized in the, in the British educational system. There are conversations about character and grit. And these are, are embodied skills that we know can be uh, acquired through engaged, collective, creative activity. It's being it's been used by commerce and other 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 sectors mm -hmm. for years. It's not yet being used in schools. So this isn't something new that we plucked out of the air. This is a skill set, a group of practices that we're aware of that we believe would really add value to how a school works. I think I think they could. I think they should. And I, we, you know, we expect kids. We're going to tell them what they're going to do in every second of the day until they graduate from high school, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're adults, <laughs> and they and they're going to do everything on their own. And it just doesn't work that way. We have to start. Or if we expect them to be creative, entrepreneurial adults, we have to start them in that path earlier. And the types of questions that you that that you're proposing asking them are are the, the types of questions that start moving them in that direction and make all of our institutions better while we're at it. If we want to have adults who are ready and engaged and skilled when they are adults, then we have to have adult adult conversations with them when they're children, if you know what I mean. Yep. Leave it up yep. for John Dewey, that, that lovely little final quote, you know, education isn't preparation for life, it is life itself. Yeah, it really has. But I'll, but I'll tell you, just as an adult, I just I don't want to grow up. I don't care. You know these adult adult conversations. I just rather have fun. <laughs> I know. I know. You know. You you use the term ludic. I don't think it's ludicrous to want to keep your child, even as you, as you get older. Life so one long rite of passage, Mitch. We know it. But then why don't we give the keys, as Alex said? To young people to help us through it. As the, as the population globally starts to age, we're going to have to take this on board. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much. You know, this, I think uh, it, it was a really interesting conversation. Uh, even before tonight, today, when when we were talking, I wasn't completely sure what immersive democracy is. I, uh, this has given me a much better idea, and it just it seems to be a um, a way forward to involve people and to, as you as you mentioned, give give them agency, and it can be applied not just to schools, but to you know to um, as a way of talking through a variety of issues. You've got it exactly right, Richard. I think at the moment schools are lagging behind this this issue. I think schools should be now taking the initiative and actually leading on this issue. Right, that would be great. As an institution, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I know it's really late over there. It, you know, it's um, what eleven thirty at night uh, yeah. here. It's seven thirty. I know uh, we have uh, uh, somebody from Colombia who's watching, and I'm not sure what time it is in Colombia, but we have also somebody from the West Coast in the U.S. where it's a couple hours earlier. Um, but um, I'll, I'll I'll let you all have you know get some sleep tonight, and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, got thanks so much. Thirty minutes of St. Patrick's Day left. We've got to go and see. If oh, that's can. right. Right. Okay. Go party. Okay. Well, thank, thanks again. And um, this is Mitch Weisberg, and I'm signing off for EdChat Interactive. And uh, hope to see you uh, next week uh, and the week after where we have some really exciting events coming up. Uh, take care. Have a good St. Patrick's Day. And uh, see you all soon.